we have seen the general principle of integration by parts. Let us look at some examples. As you will see, performing integration by parts once may not be enough. No problem, we just do it a second time. So what was the rule again? Integral of f times g prime becomes f times g, which is ok, minus a new integral f prime times g, which works well if g prime can be integrated easily, because you need g, and preferably f becomes nice once you differentiate it. Let's look at some more examples. Let us try to compute the antiderivative of the ln of x. Hey, but wait a minute, we don't have a product here. Where are f and g? Well, the ln of x equals the ln of x times 1. So for f we can pick the ln of x, and for g we can pick 1. Then indeed we can easily compute the antiderivative of g. So what do we get? ln of x becomes uh, f times uh, the uh, antiderivative of 1 equals x, uh, x times ln of x, minus the derivative of 1, 1 of, of ln of x, 1 of x times x. Uh, so we get x times ln of x minus the antiderivative of 1, which equals x. So the antiderivative of the ln of x equals x ln x minus x. Let us check if we compute the derivative of x ln x minus x. We get, if we differentiate this, x 1 times ln of x plus x times 1 over x minus 1 derivative over here, which is indeed the ln of x. So, indeed, this is correct. Let us look at the, a second example, where we want to compute the antiderivative of x squared times sine of x. What can we do? Well, we can, of course, take uh, f equals x squared and g prime equals the sine. What do we get then? f times g minus integral of f prime, so the derivative of x squared equals 2x, and we leave the g, which is minus the cosine of x. Uh, but then we are left with the integral of 2x cosine x, which is still not on any list, it's still not a standard one. So what can we do with this antiderivative? Well, we just do integration by parts again, where we have again f equals uh, 2x now, and g prime equals the cosine of x. So g prime equals cosine of x, and the derivative is the sine, so we get 2x times sine x minus integral f prime equals 2 times sine x. And now the new integral is, uh, has become easier. So what do we have in total? We had the minus x squared times the cosine x, which is over here. We had 2x times the sine x, which is over here. We still have to integrate minus 2 times the sine x, but that is just 2 times the cosine x plus an integration constant, and there we have our h of x. Of course, we check, so we compute the derivative. First here, a minus x, uh, minus x squared derivative equals minus 2x times the cosine x, plus we leave the minus x squared and compute the derivative of the cosine, gives us minus a sine x. Second term, we have to differentiate 2x times sine x, so differentiate 2x, we get 2 times the sine of x, and we leave the 2x and differentiate the sine of x, gives us a cosine of x, and the derivative of 2 times the cosine of x gives us minus 2 times the sine of x. Then let us clean up some of the mess. These terms cancel out, these terms cancel out, and we get indeed x squared times sine x, which was our original function. So there we have two more examples of how you can use integration by parts to compute an antiderivative.